Hi, I'm Taylor. For my tourist attraction, I went to the Orlando Eye on I Drive in Orlando, Florida. I chose this attraction because I'm from Orlando, and it's one of the last things I had yet to experience in the area. The Orlando Eye is modeled after the London Eye, both of, both of which that are large Ferris wheels that act as observation decks for the cities they are placed in. The Eye opened in 2015 as the main focus of the new I Drive 360 Entertainment Complex. In previous years, the Orlando High had been notoriously known as a hub for bad tourism. It was usually cheap gift shops, cheap attractions, and bad hotels. Sears so wanted to make a new and improved development in the area. Developers hoped that these new renovations would clean up and brighten up the area that many tourists come into. iDrive houses many hotels, as well as the Orlando Conference Center, for major trade shows and business meetings. Developers wanted to paint a pretty picture for all the people coming to Orlando. Just like the London Eye, the Orlando Eye was developed as a way for tourists to see all that Orlando has to offer in one simple experience. However, unlike the London Eye, there aren't many breathtaking views in Orlando. Yes, there are many big attractions and a nice skyline, but they aren't breathtaking. London, on the other hand, is filled with beautiful architecture and rich history that Orlando itself lacks. Orlando itself is very much a concrete metropolitan built for tourism and tourists to come. As someone from Orlando, I know that Orlando is a showy town, built on magic and imagination, meant to only be seen from the front end. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that both Disney and Universal don't want its visitors to see, but the eye kind of exposes that. Going on a Ferris wheel and seeing it from a bird's-eye view only exposed some of the magic and behind-the-scenes work that most visitors wouldn't want to see. The eye is marketed as an opportunity for tourists to see all that Orlando has to offer, but in reality, you cannot see half the things it claims you'll be able to see. The ride claims that you will be able to see Disney, Universal, the Orlando Skyline, Kennedy Space Center, and the Coastline. That's not true. Even as a local, some of the places were hard to identify, and some of them I could only identify because I was a local and knew their general location. However, the ride did make an effort to help people see all that it claimed to see. There was a tablet inside the cart that was a 360 camera that located and identified the, the attractions they were highlighting. On the tablet, it showed you the general location of both the Kennedy Space Center and Wikiwachi Springs, but both were hard to see. Also, many attractions faded into the horizon because of Florida's flat surface. Disney is notoriously a no-fly zone, which made it very, very difficult to see over the skyline. To keep the magic in the area, Disney likes to use trees and shrubbery to block behind the scenes being 400 feet in the air made it very hard to see things that were seemingly very close. You would think that being 400 feet in the air wouldn't be hard to see something 12 miles away, but the Epcot ball literally looked like a golf ball, and you couldn't see the Cinderella's castle. As someone who's experienced a lot of these attractions, seeing them from a bird's eye view and not getting to experience them was very boring and unappealing to me. However, in defense of the Orlando Eye, it isn't marketed towards me. It's marketed towards tourists. The Eye is a great way to see all that Orlando has to offer on a budget. Park tickets to both Disney and Universal can cost over $100, but one ride on the Orlando Eye is $20. For tourists who think that their kids might get tired, want to take naps, not enjoy or appreciate the experience that going to Disney or Universal would cost, the Eye is a really great way to show them all those things without having to spend the money on them. While I personally was bored on the ride, all the kids in my car were loud and screaming and laughing and smiling because they loved just looking at it. My favorite thing about the attraction was the pre-video they played before we got on the car. While I knew that the video showed things that I knew wouldn't be visible from the car, it was still really nice to see Florida and all the nice things that it has to offer, from beaches to attractions to the city. Orlando has a lot to offer, as well as Florida in general. It actually got me excited to ride the ride, even though I knew I probably wouldn't see those things, and it probably wouldn't be as beautiful and magical as the video made it seem. That was probably my favorite part because it made me nostalgic and miss home and realize how great it is to be from Florida. Like I said, this attraction is definitely something that is geared toward tourists and it actually seemed like the ride itself was kind of a commercial for Florida tourism in general. The pre-video definitely acted like a large commercial for Florida. Overall, I would definitely say the Orlando Eye is not something for a local to do. Me and my parents got off the ride kind of bored, kind of confused what the attraction was. It was definitely something that we're glad we get to say we did once, but we probably will never do it again. It is, however, a great thing for tourists to do. This is definitely a cheap alternative to many Orlando attractions, 
But if you're more interested in doing things rather than seeing them, I would put your money towards other things in Orlando. Mm. 